should you sell one property to buy another property for better investment results? Great question, and it's answered in this video. A uh, great answer. Uh, what there's a, been a, a, an interesting debate going on on YouTube Live. I've just noticed uh, David Freen was saying, um, "I want to raise some cash by selling one or two of my properties. How should I rank which ones to sell first? And Dr. Mesa has uh, kind of prompted uh, a very good debating point to say, "Well, can you not remortgage the existing properties rather than sell?" And I, whenever I get clients that are talking about selling properties to buy another one. Um, I often say to them, well, how much capital gains tax are you likely to pay as a result of selling the property and solicitor's fees to sell the property? And then how much are you going to be paying stamp duty to land tax, not forgetting the 3% SDRT high rate as well? Um, and then you've got to obviously think about, well, how long does the sales and purchase fees of those properties take, uh, especially when you think about refurbing your new property as well? Uh, how long does it take you to recoup that money? So I, I don't, has anyone done that? And on the panel members, um, just show, show a raise of hands if, you, if you've ever thought about selling a property to buy another property investment, but then backed out of it because the numbers didn't stack up. Anyone's got any direct experience of that? No one. Absolutely shambolic, you lot, I'll tell you. <laughs> Uh, Paul, when... Paul, Paul might say something. Paul hasn't spoken for a while. Come on, Dennis. <laughs> it's the ROI, you know. I think I always come back to ROI. Work out your ROI with the various properties, and the one that creates the highest is the one you keep, you know. But you've also got to look for the future. To the future, I sold an HMO, believe it or not, because I knew it wouldn't get a license in the future because I couldn't extend the communal areas, and I knew that was coming in. So that was. You know, that made sense to me. But uh, yeah, Paul? He's on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, yeah it's, it's one of those things. I always think that you spend enough time and effort buying the property. So why would you sell it uh, where you can refinance it? So if you're struggling to refinance, you know, to speak to Mr. Simon Hudson. Um, but yeah, you you know you you spend a lot of time, as as uh, Bronwyn says, look at your return on investment, look at how much you've invested in the property, uh, look at what the potential is, look at what's happening in the local area for those properties. Because if they're talking about putting licensing in, then that means that if you've got HMO and there's a license, it's going the area is going to come under Article Four licensing. If you've got a license, then you're well ahead of the game and you'll be able to sell that property for even more than you could currently. So look at just not just the one picture, uh, feature of what, what return on investment you're getting, but look at uh, the whole picture of what's happening with your uh, in the local area. So, yeah, but always look at reinvesting. Uh, sorry, refinancing to reinvest. Happy yeah. day. Uh, Tim, you, you've got your hand up. Are you going to help me out on this one? Yeah, basically, I, I, I always think there's a big difference between trading and investing. And trading, obviously, is when you're trying to create a, a short-term income. So you buy a property, you do it up, you sell it on. But if you're investing, um, investing is, is, to me, a long-term thing. Uh, Simon has listed all those expenses. If you add them up, they're enormous. You're going to have to make a hell of a profit on, on the second property to actually make up for that. I'm a great fan of Warren Buffett, who until recently was one of the world's wealthiest men. Um, you know, he, he basically buys stuff for life. And he thinks, actually, what am I going to be able to do in, in, in 100 years? He thinks, so, for example, doesn't like short term stuff. He says, well, actually, I'll invest in Coca-Cola because in 100 years time, someone is still going to give 15 minutes of their time to buy a can of, of Coke. They'll simply do a swap or 15 seconds or whatever. And he buys property and real business. So I think very much if you're interested in investment, why would you sell unless it makes such fantastic um, sense? If, if your return investment is appalling or going to get worse. But otherwise, why do it? Um, sit on it much easier unless the, the ROI is going down. Yeah, uh, my thoughts exactly. And, and Ben's asked a question on YouTube Live. Can transferring a property to a limited company help with capital gains tax? And the answer to that is typically no. Uh, if you're selling a property, you have capital gains tax, unless you're incorporating, which is a whole new subject. And you might want to check out our channel, but incorporation release. I won't go into that. Why not register today? Start saving tax tomorrow.